Welcome to Crafting Your Story, an elevator pitch workshop. Let's imagine you are at a networking event and you see the person who works at your dream company. You know you want to introduce yourself, but you don't quite know what to say. You start to wonder if you will share too much or too little, or even the right experiences. You know you want to be considered as a candidate for their company, but not sure what to say to convey this. If this sounds like you, this is the perfect workshop to address those questions and gain confidence in your elevator pitch. Let's get started. What is an elevator pitch? An elevator pitch is a 30 to 60 second synopsis that states who you are, your professional background and goals. This can also be used to explain your company and product to a prospective client with confidence. The ability to sell yourself and asking for what you seek will make you stand out from the crowd. An elevator pitch is great to use in multiple settings. It's a great opportunity to share it when you're giving short introductions at job fairs and career expos. You may also share it when you're in a job interview, when answering the common question, tell me about yourself. This is also helpful to use at a networking event as well. And it's a great source to help craft your LinkedIn about summary. Your pitch, especially as students, will change and evolve depending on what role you are seeking and who is your audience. Maybe you are targeting different roles or industries, and if so, you want to practice sharing aspects of your role that are more relevant to that target audience. Let's discuss the elevator pitch essentials. The first part is the introduction, where you share who you are, and this is where you can state your name and what program you are studying. This first section is often tied closely with explaining what you do, which is usually where you can share your current title at your work or most relevant professional experience for your target audience. The third section is what makes you unique. And this can be the section where you can share your skills, achievements, or other positive qualities about yourself, even accomplishments. The fourth section is where you can state your career goals. And the final section is the call to action, where you can ask directly to your audience how they can help you. Who you are. This is where you share your name and what you currently do. For example, you can share the name of the university you attend and the program of study you're working on. If you're working as well, you can add on what currently you do for work and how long you have been in that industry. We also encourage you to be mindful of how you start your introduction non-verbally. People often can immediately read your confidence from your non-verbal communication alone. Below are some suggestions to help you communicate more powerfully. The first one is dress professionally. Wearing a professional business attire can help you communicate with more presence. You also want to look confident and calm. Looking confident can mean standing tall, keeping your chin up, speaking in a calm manner and speed, and making good eye contact. And of course, smiling. Smiling alone can help you come across as approachable and friendly. Also, a strong, firm handshake can help others sense your level of confidence. When you explain what you do, you want to give a brief summary of your background. For those of you that are entry-level job seekers, maybe perhaps bachelor students here, you can select from several topics such as sharing about your most current classes, perhaps the clubs that you have been a part of, the sports that you're involved in, any internships that you have recently done, and of course volunteer experiences. For those of you that are mid or senior level, you will want to focus on your most relevant work experience, perhaps key specialties or strengths that are relevant for that target audience, and distinct KPI successes. In the explaining what you do section, it's a great opportunity to show how you solve problems in the past and how you help people. For example, can you talk about a time you dealt with a specific issue and how you solved it, how you saved the day? For those of you that are entry-level candidates, perhaps was there a time in a class, project, or an extracurricular activity where you had to lead or solve an issue? If this is not the case for you or you can't recall, you can also share about a passion that you have or a skill that you're very proud of. For those of you that are mid or senior level, you can state how long you have been in your industry and use key words that are relevant to your target audience. A bonus, of course, is always to add metrics to show your value in what you do. And of course, you want to ask yourself, 
what do I want my audience to remember most about me and make a point to state it? Here's an example for an entry-level candidate. Hi, my name is Anne. I'm currently a Bachelor's of Business Administration student at Westcliff University. And I'm also volunteering at XYZ, where I discovered I have a passion for ABC. Here's an example of a mid or senior level student. Hi, my name is Tom. I've spent the last five years learning and growing in my role as an IT support specialist, where I've developed and optimized strategic projects for our top client and managed a subset of technicians as a team lead. This third section of the elevator pitch is what makes you unique, which is about selling yourself. It's important to identify and articulate what value you can deliver to a future employer. For example, you can share your professional accomplishments. This can be a quarterly or yearly award, a client or supervisor recognition, or any recent certifications you've done. You can also focus on sharing your transferable skills. In order to do this well, we first recommend spending some time identifying a common thread in all of your jobs. Consider what abilities have you continued to strengthen in every role. Have you consistently focused on developing a positive team culture? Are you a go-to resource in your team? Do you do heavy research and introduce innovative technology to your teams? Do you train new hires? Choose the skill that you believe that your future employer may value most. Perhaps you wish to share a passion project. A passion project is a side project, a craft, a hustle, or a hobby you do outside of your studies or work. People enjoy hearing about what you're passionate about personally as well. For those of you with very limited experience, we encourage you to talk about what you're learning that is relevant for your future career goals. A second way to pitch yourself is to tell a brief story that incorporates your skill set. For example, did you craft a new idea that is now being used by your teammates or department? Did you make a process more efficient that resulted in less customer complaints? Choose a story and make yourself the hero. You can convey uniqueness through powerful and descriptive words to make your story come to life. Another option you can share is your mission statement. Making a mission statement can show others your level of professionalism and commitment to your goals. And it will also give your audience clarity on your unique brand and purpose. Some of you may still be unsure on what skills to highlight in your elevator pitch. We encourage you to reach out to your career services advisor and ask them for our career assessment test. Taking a few tests can give you more confidence in sharing your strengths and values. Here's an example for an entry-level candidate. I'd like to say I'm self-driven, an excellent collaborator, and analytical. I've developed these skills in team projects, often taking the team lead roles in class projects. I've also been recognized for my ability to present ideas by my athletic coach. Here's an example for a mid and senior level candidate. I currently support 50 employees at X company and close 95% of trouble tickets without having to escalate them to my supervisors. I was recently awarded outstanding IT support of the quarter. I strive to always deliver quick results while upholding exceptional professionalism. The ultimate goal of sharing your goals is to pique the interest of the audience member and allow for a more natural conversation. Most people react positively to hearing others share their goals and are curious to know more. To create a stronger statement on your goals, ask yourself the following questions to help you gain clarity. What specific companies or industries are you seeking? What occupation would you love to be in? What locations do you prefer? What specific skills or experiences do you possess that might make you a viable candidate for this job? We encourage you to be as specific as possible with your goals, as this helps others see you as a goal-oriented individual, and most companies seek this quality. Be ambitious. Many times we limit ourselves to what we currently believe is doable. Share your dream company culture and environment you wish to be in. You may end up speaking to the right person who can open that opportunity for you. Here's an example for an entry-level candidate. I'm looking to build my network with people who have achieved careers in the finance sector. Here's an example for a mid or senior level candidate. 
I recently received my master's in computer science. I find the work that your company does to be innovating and refreshing. I would love the opportunity to put my expertise to work for your company. The call to action section is where you state what you hope to accomplish from this elevator pitch. This is when you're asking your audience for help in some way. For example, did you wish to have a business card or set up a meeting to discuss a position further? Maybe you wanted to ask for an informational meeting. A call to action is typically an open-ended question. For example, you can share, if you have some time, I would love to meet with you in person to hear more about your organization or opportunities. Or would you be able to put me in contact with that person in charge of the business development department so I can tell them more about what I can offer your company? An audience member after listening to your elevator pitch may choose to offer support immediately. If they agree to help you with your call to action, you want to thank them for their time and ask for their contact information or business card and give yours as well. You can also be direct and let them know you'll be following up with them via email before the end of day. Sometimes you may have an audience member who is not the right contact and can't offer support at that time. If this is the case, thank them for their time and ask for their contact information and ask if open to follow up with you via email. Have your networking business card ready. This should not be the same as your company card since you are networking for job opportunities. A self-made business card is easy to use. Vistaprint is one of the many affordable card printing options to make your own business card. You can add your name, current studies, target internships or jobs, and you can also add your top accomplishment. Here's an example for entry-level students at a networking event. Hi, my name is Anne. I'm currently a Bachelor's of Business Administration student at Westcliff University, and I'm also volunteering at XYZ, where I discovered I have a passion for ABC. I'd like to say I'm self-driven, an excellent collaborator, and analytical. I've developed these skills in team projects, often taking the team lead roles in class projects. I've also been recognized for my ability to present ideas by my athletic coach. I'm looking to build my network with people who have achieved careers in the finance sector. If you have some time, I would love to schedule a meeting with you to learn more about your career path and the opportunities available in the finance industry. Here's an example for a mid or senior level student. Hi, my name is Tom. I've spent the last five years learning and growing in my role as an IT support specialist, where I've developed and optimized strategic projects for our top client and managed a subset of technicians as a team lead. I currently support 50 employees at X company and close 95% of trouble tickets without having to escalate them to my supervisors. I was recently awarded outstanding IT support of the quarter. I strive to always deliver quick results while upholding exceptional professionalism. I recently received my master's in computer science. I find the work that your company does to be innovating and refreshing. I'd love the opportunity to put my expertise to work for your company. Would you be open to put me in contact with a person in charge of recruiting so I can tell them a little bit more about what I can offer your company? And now for the final tips. It can be challenging to write an elevator pitch and can be difficult to choose what you want to highlight. We encourage you to write down all things that come to mind for each sections. And as you reread it and think about your target audience, you can edit out the unnecessary statements. We also recommend you pay attention to how you choose to transition from one thought to another. Begin and end each sentence with confidence. Remember, you are the hero in your story. You will have a few different versions of the elevator pitch depending on your audience, so you want to make a point to memorize certain stories without sounding rehearsed. This is why it is very important to practice, practice, and practice so you can share your story with confidence. And lastly, your concise and clear understanding of your abilities will not only lead others to believe in your abilities, but also help employers more readily identify how you fit into the bigger picture of your department, field, or industry. Lawrence Brown